Good morning, and welcome to St. Mark's as today we celebrate the 10th Sunday after Pentecost. I want to extend our welcome to Rebecca Hunter. Thank her for being with us and for sharing her talents with us as our guest pianist. Yes, we will be using piano throughout our worship time together. Also wanted to point out the information with regard to our bus trip to Sight and Sound to see Moses. Uh, I checked with uh, Cheryl, and we have approximately only one delinquent who has not gotten their money in. <laughs> but I assure you I am going, and I will get the payment to her as quickly as possible. Please note the uh, date for the blessing of the backpacks, as well as this coming Saturday, we have a tremendous opportunity to meet the Reverend Bishop Victor Padmore at the Lutheran Church of Liberia. The information is there for you in your bulletin. The Lutheran Church of Liberia is one of those churches that are synod partners, so it's great that we have the opportunity to meet with Bishop Padmore. The uh, information is there as well as the picnic lunch that will be served following uh, our time together and the reminder to please bring a lawn chair. Next Sunday, Worship and Music Committee meets following worship. We will gather in the middle lounge. I believe uh, Becky has an announcement to share. Good morning. Like Hunter College and St. Mark's have a rather long history. As you know, Pastor Macy is a graduate of Like Hunter College, and my former pastor, the Church of the Savior, the Reverend Ronald Meese, was a son of St. Mark's in the 50s and 60s, and he led Church of the Savior for at least two decades. That being said, oh, I forgot, Pastor Macy told me that. Pastor Lacrone was the chaplain before he went to St. Luke's at Lycoming College. So Lutherans and Lycoming College kind of have a link, and they have asked for our help. They are instituting a program called Open Ways for. It's for their uh, new students who come from urban areas. Uh, they want to make them feel more at home in a little bird like Williamsport. And so one of the things they're doing with them is they're having a project day, August 21st, at New Covenant United Church of Christ. Here's how you can help. The students that are participating in this service project will be packing hygiene items for Shepherd of the Streets. They need hygiene items. And so the Evangelism and Fellowship Committee is asking that you please consider rounding up a few hygiene items and bringing them in next Sunday along with your box of cereal. So we actually have two requests. Please remember cereal Sunday and also if you're able, bring some hygiene items. Just the same stuff you folks need at home. Shampoo, body wash, soap. And so uh, let's help like coming once again as uh, Lutherans here in our area. Thank you. Do we have other announcements we would like to share? If not, I would ask you to please stand as you are able to be with you.
most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ has given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.
glorious God. Your generosity waters the world with goodness, and you cover creation with abundance. Awaken in us a hunger for the food that satisfies both body and spirit, and with this food fill all the starving world. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, and from them, 
according to the flesh, comes the Messiah, who is over all. God bless forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Six times. 
times in the Gospels. And that tells us something. That tells us that this story is important. We shouldn't toss it aside. It's not something we can say, well, that was then, and this is now, and we can look beyond it. That story is important, but why? Why did the evangelist tell and retell the story? Why can we, as 21st century Christians, include it in readings for worship? It really is not the numbers of people, and it's not the food either. It's what the story communicates to us beyond the miracle. The crowds follow Jesus to a deserted place to hear him preach and teach. It grows late in the day. The people are hungry. They did not come prepared. The disciples ask Jesus to send them away to get food. Jesus says they don't need to go away. You give them something to eat. The disciples tell Jesus that all they have are five loaves and two fish. Jesus asks the disciples to bring the food. He tells the crowds to sit. An invitation that they're going to be in this place just a little bit longer. Jesus takes the food, looks up to heaven, blesses it, breaks it apart, and gives it to the disciples for distribution. All were filled. All had enough. All had more than enough. And the disciples took up twelve baskets full of left. The biblical scholar John Dominic Crossan points out the miracle stories of Jesus are, in message, parables in disguise. According to Crossan, these miracle stories tell us not only about the miraculous, they also communicate the way of the kingdom, how both Jesus and the kingdom break into our world without warning and introduce us to the wonders of God. The story we hear today may seem simple and straightforward. Jesus miraculously gives people food. But if we go a little deeper, we can also see it as parable. Jesus takes five loaves and two fish. Five plus two equals Seven. Seven in Hebrew is an important number. In Judaism, seven means heaven and earth are in harmony together. Three, the number for God. Four, the number for the earth. Three and four, seven. Jesus gives thanks. He blesses the loaves and fish and distributes them. The actions associated Holy Communion. The disciples took up 12 baskets full of leftovers, the number associated with the 12 tribes of Israel, and later with the 12 apostles. The miracle story has Jesus give the command, you give him something to eat. And so, what Jesus asks of the 12, Jesus now asks of us and all. Is there enough food to go around or not? Do we have some sort of obligation in that to feed the hungry? What does it mean to acknowledge Jesus as a miracle worker? What kind of people does God ask us to be? Are we to care about injustice and poverty where people don't have enough? Or are we supposed to do something? And if it all hinges 
teaches on our proper understanding, what are we doing baptizing demons? Before recounting the miracle, Matthew tells us the story of Herod beheading John the Baptizer. Remember, John was in prison because he had been accusing Herod of adultery with Herodias, his brother Philip's wife. Herod throws a feast to celebrate his birthday, inviting all his rich and powerful friends. Herodias' daughter Salome dances before Herod at the feast. That pleases Herod, and so he tells Salome that she can have whatever she wants as a reward. And she asks for the head of the baptizer on a platter, and Herod agrees. What on earth does this story have to do with the miracle story? Plenty. Herod could have refused. He could have accepted God's judgment concerning his sin and welcomed the new age of the kingdom and the new age of understanding. He could have welcomed the grace. Instead, he chose to agree with Salome's demands. He chose life as it was, with human power and human greed in charge, rather than life as it could be, life as to what John and Jesus brought. The good news of Jesus always asks us to hear the voice of God, to leave the world of injustice behind, and to be led by the Holy Spirit into the kingdom. This story asks us to have Jesus take our bread, our very lives, and share. To break them and to share. For in the blessings of the kingdom, there is always bread to share. And joy and life for all.
confess our faith. <coughs> I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into heaven. On the third day, He rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge those in the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the last.
Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so to the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending King.
body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in His grace. Amen. Let us pray. We thank you, generous God, for the refreshment we have received at your banquet table. Send us now to spread your generosity into all the world through the one who is our dearest treasure, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever.